With Batman Fever underway with less than a month until Matt Reeves and Robert Batten bat grace our screens with their interpretation of the Batman, I really wanted to take this time to talk about the latest wave of Batman sets that have released for the upcoming movie. All of these sets released in November, I believe, but only in the US. The rest of the world had to wait until January 1st. Even then, we didn't get them on that date either. I had to wait until like January 8th or something ridiculous, but whatever, we have them now. This is the first time that Batman has had a wave of sets completely dedicated to being based entirely on a solo Batman movie. Granted, this is a wave consisting of only three sets, but it is more than what some of the uh, MCU movies have received. I spoke a little on some of the Batman stats in this video here if you would like to check out what I also don't like about this new Robert Pattinson Batman figure if you're feeling a tad impatient. The wave consists of three sets, a small Catwoman motorcycle chase, a new Batmobile, and the top dog being a new Batcave. They're all feeling pretty standard, but also nostalgic for a Batman line. The Batman and Catwoman motorcycles are a very cool, unique new build for a bike made entirely out of pieces rather than the casual bike mold that we are used to. I appreciate how different they both feel from one another, where Selina's appears more as a sports bike compared to Bruce's which is kind of like a customed muscle bike. It goes really well with his muscle car of a Batmobile. Selina comes with this crate with some gems in it, of course she does, and uh, the bikes are very fun to just make crash into each other. They're very sturdy. The bikes also include this pretty cool side build of a bat signal where I have Penguin standing by because I genuinely thought that this came with the Batmobile, not the bikes, so ignore him for the time being. Uh, it's nothing substantial, but it does have a nice addition though. Uh, it glows in the dark. That's pretty cool. The Batmobiles are always hot selling items and I don't see this one making any exception. The set does wonders in person compared to the box. I think the size of the beast made it look a lot more unappealing uh, with its images, but uh, from how it looked on the back is what convinced me to finally buy it. It's also got an exclusive penguin. Lego knew exactly what they were doing with this. While the car is definitely massive, especially compared to how sleek the design is in the actual movie, it's not that much different in size to other live action Batman Batmobiles, so it fits in quite well with those. It still has the same details of the car, which is really cool. Nice spoilers on the back and close to the ground suspension, but it's just not as long and skinny as the actual design. It's still a good design though. It comes with the blue flame pieces that you can put on, but I think that that looks ridiculous for this specific set. This movie's supposed to be certified Kino, none of this comic book movie crap. Time for the big boy, the Bat Cave. Though this isn't much of a cave, more of an abandoned train station, which is actually what makes this so unique. Removing the bike for just a second in this middle section, we can see Bruce's computers with some pretty cool stickers of Riddler messing around Gotham. I love the color scheme on these. It also includes some clue tiles for the messing around shenanigans. Each side is complemented with some stairways, and this side currently features Alfred, who's leading us to the bottom section, which is an area that's dedicated to a map of some crime scenes that makes a question mark. Little on the nose there, don't you think? Top of the banister, we have Selina, who's just chilling and hanging out in the Batcave, which leads to the opposite side, where we now are at Batman's gear and equipment rack. The whole thing can be rotated around to show some detailing on the back. There's nothing major, but it does have a little entrance way with a Wayne tag on the door. This wall can also come down. Maybe it makes play easier. I'm not too sure. The computers in the middle can be removed and are simply sitting on the train tracks, allowing you to slide them around if need be. I didn't like this feature very much, so I simply used some spare pieces that that come with the set and uh, that allows me to have the computers just sitting still instead of flying around. Removing these computers though is what makes room for the Batmobile. As shown earlier there is a unique bike build here that is different from the previous bikes of the smaller set. Same build method, it's all out of pieces but it is a different bike. These fit in really well together and they fit in well with say the Speed Champions line. I really like this new improvement to the motorcycles. Let's get into these figures and we'll start off with Robert Pattinson himself. <sighs> He's fine. While it looks new and unique for Batman, and it is a cool figure, Robert's suit is a lot darker in the movie than this figure would have you believe. I think the McFarlane toy here seems to capture that look a lot better. Each Batman comes with a different head for Rob. Uh, you can have an unmasked bat. It's pretty cool. It is just the Tom Riddle head though, but it still works quite well. 
Taking a closer look at Batman himself, the star of the show, I like the figure overall even though the colours irk me a little bit but the head completely ruins him for me. I just can't see this Bruce head and not picture the comic sets. Uh, there's only a handful of Batman figures that have a unique head and I'm in the belief that the movie figures just require it. The Tom Riddle head works really well for me and I genuinely prefer this look than with the cowl. Crazy, I know, an unmasked Batman, but my displays, I actually just ignore the fact that the cowl doesn't line up with the eyes and I just use it on the Rob head instead because at least the expression is something new and unique for him. The villains of the wave are Riddler, Catwoman and Penguin. The two dudes are each exclusive to their respective sets while Catwoman is included in two of them. Here is a look at the double sided faces plus Selina wearing her helmet and a better look at the stud shooters for 2022. It's worth noting that while Catwoman appears in both, technically she has an exclusive part on her which is her chain. One set includes it in black, one set includes it in grey. And here is a look at the rest of the figures with Alfred, Bruce and Jim Gordon. Double sided faces and an appreciation for the Jeffrey Wright likeness. It's probably my favourite Jim Gordon. Here's all of the figures all together which makes 10 figures total, 7 of them being unique. That is a look at the whole wave of the LEGO Batman 2022 sets. A weird feeling mixed bag where I'll change my mind depending on when you ask me. I think all of the sets are great in all honesty and some of my favourites for live action superhero movies I think. I even think that the figures are really great, the best being maybe Jim Gordon and the Riddler but Batman does kind of suck here, not gonna lie. This could have been a really big deal for Batman Lego to compare with how much of a big deal they're hyping up this movie is for Batman. I'm disappointed at the treatment of Robert Pattinson but it's a good thing that the sets themselves are quite special.